a moment just now. I bless God for each and every one of you guys that, had, that was in me, it had to come out. And I just thank God for each and every one of you guys this morning. It's a beautiful day. This is the day the Lord has made, and we shall and will rejoice in this day. We ain't gonna even worry about tomorrow. Because tomorrow ain't even promised anyway. I can remember my grandmama singing that song one day at a time, sweet Jesus. That's all I'm asking you for. Now I realize what she was why she was saying that. Because we can't live one day at a time. And it's by his grace that you'll see enough. There go that grace again, ain't it? Oh, you see that? And then, and, then, and then I remember Paul saying in the scripture that said, say, if it be thine will, we'll go this and do that or the other. Yeah. So we got to remember, we got to put those type of words within our mouth. If it's God's will later on, my wife might cook. Uh-oh. Cook something. <laughs> I, I'm going to take that away because she doesn't feel like cooking. But if you, you get what I'm saying. If it's, if it's, then it, and some people will say that, that ain't, you shouldn't be saying that that's scripture. If it be thine will. And thy will be done. Not all the time Chester's will be done. Because Chester might will to want something that God said, no, I don't want you to have that. And I got to be grateful for that. Because it's by his grace, ain't it? You get it? Yeah, you get it? Uh, we got really, really to get that. The guy blessed my heart last night. We was on the pier fishing and he told me, he said, he heard my voice, didn't even see my face. He said, I can listen to you on YouTube. I ain't seen this fella in years. I said, well, what you heard? He said, I hear Jesus. I said, that's all. I said, that's what I want, because that ain't me. He said, I hear Jesus. He said, Don't nobody preach like you. They be, yeah. and yeah, you can understand what you're saying, because the God's supposed to be simple. It's supposed to be spoke with simplicity. That even I can't can go somewhere and preach to somebody. I haul I can't in. Four years old, he ought to be able to preach the gospel. Amen. He four years old. That's how that's how the gospel is. And that blessed my heart to understand that he didn't see me. Because I am dressed pants anyway. He ain't got to worry about that. <laughs> but he didn't see me. He heard the gospel. Amen. And that's how we want to keep it. That he hear the gospel. Okay? So we thank God for this morning. Y'all think y'all going to get away? If you have your Bible, I pray you do. Go with me to uh, Galatians. I say good morning again. Good morning. I already done preached. <laughs> we thank God for this opportunity once again to uh, stand and uh, preach His Word. And as the Word come to me, and I, Lord, man, I be trying to study, I be trying to study, and I studied some all week, and then He just buzzed me across the head with something totally different than I studied all week because I think I be in my will. But we've been, but we've been born into this. Uh, teaching on grace. And we got to understand that it's two different it's the, all grace is the free gift, okay? And we got to understand when we're talking about the, the grace that gives us that eternal life, but then you have grace that allow you to be do this and do that and, and by his grace. Those two different ways, but they all coincide together, okay? The grace coincide together. The grace still represents grace regardless. It's nothing that we that we have anything. We I, I wrote down a couple of notes. There's nothing with grace that, and I, I don't want to look at that. And I, it, it's that God's grace does not make our flesh better. Write that down in your book so you won't think, oh, that grace, God's grace. Somebody go to preach and say, grace is going to make you better. You need to mark that off your list because whenever He made it, made you better, then guess what? You just took that you deserved it. You you, you just made your flesh happy. Okay, and it don't take but you can put a lot of stuff behind grace to just void grace out. When you put start putting stuff behind grace, then grace don't mean anything anymore. Okay, God's grace, and even in in John one, and it just said grace upon grace or grace upon you'll see it. I'm I'm going there, but we got to keep grace and understand what grace is. Okay. And we got to understand if somebody telling you, well, you got to do this and you got to do this. I seen you didn't hear it. Then you look, I'm saved by grace. Amen. And it wasn't nothing that I did to deserve. You got to be able to say that. Because even when somebody come and give you all kind of scripture, did that, they'll say, look, man, I'm saved by grace through faith in what Christ did up on Calvary. Amen. I didn't have nothing to do with it. Amen. Right. I, I didn't have nothing to do with it. What do you mean to tell me, Jeff, because you didn't? No, I didn't have nothing to do with it. And they keep walking behind you and you tell them, look, I didn't have nothing to do with it. I'm saved by grace. We got to get that. 
Well, the, the reason is that it, it just sounds too easy. It sounds too easy. That, that's why it was hard for Jesus to come over to the Pharisees and the son. That's why it was hard for Paul to come over to the church of Corinth. All these different churches. He kept preaching the same thing over and over and over because it was just too easy. And it just felt like it was just too easy. But do, you, do we really think it was easy for Jesus to come and lay down his life? Do we really think it was easy for Jesus to be crucified? I mean, the son of God to come down from heaven. Do you think that was easy? I'm sitting up in, oh, with my father in heaven for me to come down to save his son. Do you think it was easy for Christ to tote that, that rugged tree? Do you think it was easy for them to, for him to take all the ridicule and all the uh, the spitting on and the telling about, now you decide to get yourself off that cross? Do you, do that, you think that was easy? Do you think it was easy that he got nails driven in his hands on both sides while he was living? Do you think that was easy? Nope. Do you think it was easy that they, they, they hung him up on that cross with thieves and robbers? Do you think that was easy for the Son of God to put be put to shame like that? That was sinless. So grace ain't grace, grace, it ain't really easy. And he died for our sin. And every time we add something to grace, we say, Well, Jesus, what you did wasn't enough. When I tell a person, when well, you got to do this and you got to do that and you got to do that, if you don't do that and you ain't say, then he, you tell that person that Jesus ain't enough. Right. You might as well go and say amen. Because you've been hearing it all your life. Amen. You've been hearing it all your life. If you don't do this and you don't do that and you don't do you can't do nothing to save yourself anyway. All you can realize is that you're a sinner. And when you realize you're a sinner, then you'll say, well, thank God for Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, I know I don't get a whole lot of amens on that. But for, for people that really understand grace, that we never deserved it. Some of these songs y'all listen to would mess you up. I was this and then God saved me. No, you wouldn't. You had to be a sinner before God saved you. Because God saved us from sin. Y'all, do anybody agree with that? I agree. What, what did Jesus come to die for? Sin. What, what did Jesus come to die for? Sin. sin. Right? So that in, in other words, everybody in here say got to admit that I was a sinner. Thank you. Amen? Amen. So so when we look at the scripture today, when we look at the scripture today and I get we get into it, I want us to understand grace. Mm -hmm. Understand grace. And when we understand grace, then we'll be able to walk, okay? We'll, 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 you, it'll take it ought to do this. It'll take a lot off you. Because there wasn't nothing you can do anyway. Amen. You'll be like, Phew. when I started understanding grace, that's what I just said. Because I was frustrating myself trying to do something that I couldn't do anyway. Because yeah. I was doing it in the flesh and couldn't do it in the flesh anyway. Right. Why? Because the flesh and the spirit is what? Image they against each other. They, they, don't, they, ain't no, they don't get along. Nope. They can't, they can't, it's like oil and water. They can't mix. So every time you try to do something in the flesh to please God, then right then you're telling God, you, you really ain't talking to God, really. I don't know who you're talking to. I guess you're talking to Satan. Now all you ain't talking to Satan either because he put that, he put that, that he put, uh, 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 he put image between flesh and Satan too. Yeah. So you ain't, so in other words, you can't even make Satan mad because he ain't studying you anyway. What he wants you to do is not trust Christ. That's right. That's all he wants you to That's do is right. don't trust Christ. Don't trust Christ to be saved. Well, if Satan wants you, well, the devil may be, no, the devil won't make you do nothing. He wants you to go and run out of everything you want to run out of. Matter of fact, he help you get it. He tried to give it all to Jesus up without the will. Do you remember that? Yeah. I'm going to sit you in this pinnacle. So the, the devil wants you to have all this stuff, but he wants you to do is take your mind and eyes off of Jesus Christ. That's right. Amen. He wants you to take your eyes off that grace. That's right. See? You see it? Mm -hmm. I can make you see everything but that grace. That's right. And when we look into this, these scriptures that Paul was trying to just, especially right here in the, in the book of Galatians, but he was trying to get them people to understand that y'all were in grace, y'all were saved by grace, but for some reason or another, y'all let somebody creep in and start preaching and teaching something else, and now y'all just that fast, y'all to turn back to the world and the world teaching the law. And the law. Y'all just turn back that fast when I've just told you that there's no flesh is justified by the law. Then all of a sudden you are, well, we got to do this, pastor. No, we don't have to do that, pastor. We're going to trust God in his word. 
regardless of how you've been this been driven in you, you got to understand that it's by grace. Amen. And you cannot miss law with grace. That's right. Amen. And not only that, you got to understand that grace is what is the free gift of God. Amen. It's nothing that you can do to deserve it. Okay, I wanna, I want, I wanna drive this home because I want us to really be able to walk as believers. Cause last week we talked about unbelief, and anytime you, you this can get right into the line of unbelief again. Then anytime you think there's something that you can add to grace, then you're back in unbelief again. Amen. 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 I, I want to talk real slow because I want us to get this. Okay, I want us to get this. Pastor, you sound like a tape recorder. I want to be a tape recorder because this is the only Bible that's been wrote and our grandparents and the grandparents and they had the same word. But the scripture has to be illuminated to you. What that mean? i got to be able to see them. Amen. How? With the spirit, man. Amen. Because when I see them with the flesh, man, I make it be about the flesh. But when I see it with the spirit, man, it ain't going to be about nobody but God. Amen. Yeah? The flesh, man, going to see everything for me. Everything for me, it is, but it's in Christ. It's in Christ. We got you cannot leave out the main ingredient. You got to keep Christ. It's got to be in Christ. Okay? Amen. Amen. And I still ain't got the way I want to go yet, but that's all right. I'm still teaching. All right. Galatians. Galatians uh two. And I'm gonna say I'm gonna, I'm gonna read one verse. I'm gonna read one verse and then y'all can sit down. Y'all ain't stood up yet. <laughs> One verse in Galatians 2, that very last verse. And, and, and I want you to concentrate on this word. This word right here. This word I want you to concentrate on every time you think in the flesh that you want to do this. And I'm going to go back and show you why Apostle Paul said this. In, verse, in Galatians 2, verse 21, it says it like this. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is what? Dead in vain. You may be seated. You may be seated. Father God, we thank you right now for this opportunity right now to be used of you, Lord God. Even when we recognize that we're unprofitable, Lord. We're not worthy to be used of you, Lord God. But we thank you for the spirit of the Holy Ghost that you used within us, oh God, that was given to us, Lord God, when we believed upon Jesus Christ as Savior. So, Father God, I'm asking right now, Lord God, that you would... Uh, open up my spiritual eyes, oh God, that I, that the scripture will be illuminated to me, oh God, that I may preach and teach your word, Lord God. Not only that, but spiritual hearts be open today and spiritual eyes will be open today to understand grace. That we may understand grace, oh God, that we may be able to understand by being your workmanship and that we'll be able to walk in Christ. So, Father God, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. And, Father God, we pray that somebody today will be saved. It is in Jesus' name we pray and say amen. 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 Pat, stay right where you at. Stay right where you at. And I want you to understand Paul teaching to the church at Galatia. This church that was formed by the power of the Holy Ghost through Apostle Paul as he received the gospel message. And he went through preaching the gospel. He went through preaching the gospel, establishing churches, establishing churches here. He was only able to do it by God's grace. Amen. He was only able to do it by God's grace, but he still was met with adversaries. Why? Because this is, this oftentimes stuff get rooted in you so bad. It get rooted in you so bad, but this is how we are taught. This is what I've been taught all my life. And Paul had a big job to go there, go to them, and to say, just like Jesus. When Jesus came, they said he was a blasphemer because he said he was the Son of God. Yeah. He called himself Son of God. Let's let's stone him to death. They, he was so rooted in them, even though Isaiah said that a son is born, and then Jeremiah spoke about all the prophets. They spoke the prophets, spoke about it, and they killed the prophets. Even though the prophets were speaking about Jesus, the rock that Moses struck was Jesus. That's right. And it was all in the scripture, but they hard-hearted did not want to understand that grace. It was still grace. Even though they were working and doing the thing that they had to do, that was a, 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 a it was a shadow of what was to come, it was still grace. Amen. It was still grace. Amen. Okay? So we gotta understand that even in the scriptures, when Paul I, I, I just take it, I'm going to pray for I'm taking it, I'm taking it, I don't know what happened, but it'd be all right. I'm, I'm taking that Paul might have got uh, a letter or something saying that, man, they still over there trying to 
do uh, rituals and they still over there sacrificing lambs and all this stuff. These people coming in trying to teach them that they got to still stay with the law. Mm -hmm. They got to still stay with Judaism. Man, we got to do something. We got to get, we got to, we got uh, maybe Timothy on. We got to get a letter over to them in a pistol and let them know that th that, is, no, y'all can't do that no more. Y'all can't do that no more. Because when you do that, you're making grace a non effect. Because you're trying to keep the law and you're trying to walk by by grace. Yes. And you can't do both. If anything that we do lining up with legalism to say that we're saved, then we make the grace of God of no effect. That's right. yeah. The cross of Christ is no effect. That's right. So if you tell somebody, well, I'm doing this and I'm doing that, and that's why I'm saved, then you ain't saved. What you mean, Pastor? You ain't. You saved by grace. That's right. You saved by grace. Well, Go to the book, Pastor. Okay, here it is. Uh, Paul, Paul said in 15, talking to them, I, I, I started here because uh, it was something in it that the Holy Spirit led me to. But I'm going to go through. Follow me and listen. Every now and then I might get a nugget that I might pull out for you because we got other scriptures that we want to look at as well, okay? Uh, uh, verse 15, Apostle Paul sharing with them this the word that he's sharing with them to understand and make them see and understand what the what grace means and how we're saved, okay? And not not only am I doing this to bring up, but I'm, it's a sheet that we have that I'm going to take you even to the attributes of grace for the believer, okay? That way we operate in grace as well toward others, towards our families, towards our job. Toward, we got to operate in that same grace, okay? And we got a sheet. We're gonna, it's going to show us what grace looks like. It ain't going to look familiar to a lot of us. Because it, it stunned me that grace looked like that. And I said, what? You mean I got to do that? Just show that I'm in grace? Man, that's crazy. But you'll see it in the attributes of what grace is. All right. He said it like this. He said, Paul said in this letter, he said, in 15, he said, We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. Y'all hear that? Mm -hmm. A man is not justified by the works. This is in your Bible, guys. I know it might not be preached on much, but this is in your Bible, guys. Open up your Bibles and see this. So when somebody try to throw the law up on you, you throw it back at them. Okay? I'm not justified by the law. You see it? And I'm going to go to more scripture and show it to you again. I'm going to go to Romans and show it to you. I'm going to show you even in... I'm, well, I'm just going to show you when I show you. He said, but by faith of who? Christ. Jesus Christ. Christ. And then he said, even we have... Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. I just preached the gospel to you. That's it. I just preached the gospel to you. I just told you that you were saved by grace through faith of Jesus Christ. Just then. Just, just then. Because he said it, he said it like this. He said, We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentile, knowing that a man is not justified by what? Works of the law. This comes to me so often because even if I flip through, if I see something, even if I want to check something on my phone, I see people still trying to preach the law. Still telling people that you got to do this and you got to do that and you got to do this and you got to do that, but they never lift up Jesus, period. Never lift up Jesus. The law is to show us how sinful we are. And the law is to bring it to the cross of Christ. That's what the law is to do. Bring you to the cross of Christ. Well, you mean once I come to the cross, I ain't got to keep it. I didn't say you didn't have to keep the law. Christ has completed everything. Yes, he and if you believe that you're doing something to make God say, well, you deserve it in his grace, then you're in error. That's right. You're in error. And it's complicated to those that really don't get into the word. Because you can go to most churches today, they beating you across the head with an axe. They all they want to talk about people smoking and drinking and dipping and chewing and all that. That's all they want to talk about. They don't want to lift up Jesus at all. Well, we know we sin and fall short of the glory of God. How can I get out of this sin? Amen. <laughs> this is what I want to know. How can I be saved? What must I do to be saved? Amen. You telling me everything that I already know. What must I do to be saved? Amen. This is the message in this time right now. What must I do to be saved? You ain't telling me no secret that I don't already know. I know the flesh ain't no good. So why you keep telling me that? 
Who is good? God is good. Amen. We got to spend more time on telling people about the attributes of God and that which he has done already to set you free. Amen. It's because of him that you have liberty. Not because of you and not because of me. Amen. Come on, come on. He said that he said he did that a man is not justified by the works of the law. That pen that put give you one time right there to let you know that the law can't save you. Okay? Then he said, by but by what? Faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed who in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ. We're justified by the faith of Christ. We're justified by the faith of Christ. Amen. We're justified by the faith of what Christ did up on Calvary. Amen. We're justified by the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross. Amen. How am I justified? By the blood that was shed up on Calvary. You mean I ain't got, I, I can't do nothing to justify myself. He, the Bible said that he is the just and the justifier. Okay, now pay attention because I want us to understand where the, where this is where this is where the conflict comes in. This is where the conflict comes in. Okay, here, here you go, and he said, "And by works of the law, <clears throat> for by works of the law shall no shall no what Let Let it. Be Okay, that's where the, that's where the collision comes in." We be oftentimes we try to justify flesh, but he said by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified. Yeah. And oftentimes we want, well, I ain't. nope, no flesh. I can't preach. Can't come up here and preach you that I'm your flesh when to be justified because I preach Christ to you. No flesh can be justified. That's right. Pay attention. I want you to don't get lost now. Stay with me. Everybody, grab each other hand and say, "Come on with me." Don't 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 get lost. Don't get left in the wilderness. Follow me, okay? And you tell your believer behind, follow me, believer, because we really need to understand. Follow me. Don't don't leave me. Don't fall asleep. Bump your neighbor right now. They gnawing off. Tell them to wake up. Because you need to hear this. Oftentimes, you don't. And most time, people have slept through the whole life in church. And they, amen, amen, pastor. They ain't heard nothing he said. But say, amen, pastor. But we need to hear this. Because it's very vital. It's, it's very important. Because you, as believers, can share the same message. Somebody else could be quickened and made alive. Amen. 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 It's very vital. You can do it on your phone. You can, it's ways to do it. Pay attention. He said, but if we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. He said, if therefore Christ the minister of sin, God forbid. No, you're not. God forbid. Come on, come on. For if I build up again the thing that the things which I destroy, I make myself a transgressor. Here it is, for, for I through the law am dead to what? The law that I may what? Live unto God. Pay attention, because this is where we come in at. He said, I am crucified with Christ. We are crucified with Christ. As a born again believer, you're crucified with Christ because your flesh had to die. Amen. But guess what? You're still right there on your shoulder, bitch. Right. Oh, he ain't right. going nowhere. Why, why you say that? Because I'm still walking. Yep. I'm still walking. In flesh and blood, I'm still walking. But pay attention. Pay attention. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. I live. Pay attention. Yet yeah. yeah, not I. Pay attention, but Christ living in me. How are you justified? Through Christ living in you. Right. Not by your flesh. And the people, well, we know your flesh now, but if I don't put enough emphasis on that it's Christ living in you, you'll continue to lead to your own understanding and you'll continue to look at flesh and you'll stay confused. That's right. And you'll stay, oh, because you thought you really could do something, yeah. but you can't. You got to understand that I am crucified with, but I'm still here. But when I accepted Christ as my Savior, I was crucified with him. That's right. This is the, this is the mindset of a born-again believer. Because that which is born of the flesh is flesh. Yeah. And that which is born of spirit is what? Yeah. When I got when I when I got saved, guess what I was doing? I was quickened and made alive in the spirit. Amen. 
Now the spirit of the Holy Ghost is what guides and lead me. But that flesh man is still right there because I'm still walking. And then this corruptible body got to take it off one day and put on an incorruptible body, right? And I get my glorified body one day, but right now I still got this old corruptible body. And we still live in a corruptible world. We live in a fallen world because of sin. We live in a fallen world because of sin. And everybody, oh, they're going to get so much better. That's a lie. It's not. It was not better even from the fall of Adam and Eve in the garden. Sin came into the world. That's right. Before that, you didn't even have to water the ground. <laughs> that fruit that I got inside the house, I'd be watered. I, before sin came, it watered itself. Yeah. And that's how, nice. this is how beautiful it was before sin fell and came in the world. Now you just go up there and pick a fruit. didn't even have to till the ground. You just go. <laughs> Amen. That was before Sin came into the world. So when you look around you, you recognize that it's sin in the world, okay? And, and, and then the sin in the world, not only sin in the world, guess what? That flesh, sin. But I've been born again. Yes, you have. But you got a, you got a, you got two natures. Anybody that contest that got them say they got two natures? I got two natures. Amen. I got two natures. You do too. Because the Bible said. Alright? Here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is. I am crucified with Christ. That's that new one right there. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh. Oh, man, he's still living. Yeah, the life that he lived in the flesh, I live by the faith of. I live by the faith of the Son of God. By the faith of. You ain't never seen him. You ain't, you ain't never you ain't never sat with him. Like Peter know. You didn't do that. You live in the by faith. That's right. Of what he did. Because you in that. I remember that song when you sang on Easter. Were you there when they crucified five miles? You remember that song? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I wasn't there. I wasn't there. But I believe it by faith. That's right. I believe it by faith. That's right. I believe he died for my sin. I really do. I believe and I trust it. And I don't trust nothing else but that. <laughs> I trust that I trust that Jesus saved my soul by what he did upon Calvary. And I don't trust nothing in flesh. I don't trust nothing in man. I trust the grace of God. Amen. Period. Amen. And I put a thousand periods behind. I don't trust nothing else. That's right. And I'm going to show you why in a minute. I'm going to show you why. Stay with me. Everybody still got the other person in hand? Y'all hold a hand. Don't let them. Don't let them. There you go. Don't let them fall. Because I want you to understand why I don't want you to fall. Because it is up to us to remind each other of that. That's right. Even when our brothers fall weak and when he finds himself in a position that he, you ought to be able to edify him. Do tell him Christ died for your sin. Christ justified you. And you started trusting your flesh too much. That's why you sitting there looking ugly. That's right. Because right. you thought your flesh could do something that it couldn't do. So if I preach to you that your flesh is able, then I'll be going against Jesus. Because Jesus said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Oh, glory. Be the God. Can y'all just stay over here for a little while and pray with me? They was over there knocked out. Because the flesh is weak. That's right. We've got to understand this. We, we really need to understand grace. Okay? We need to understand it. And that once we understand it, then we can walk in it. And then we won't be trying to add nothing else to it. Amen. I don't want no paprika on my eggs. I just want salt and pepper. Don't add nothing else to my eggs when you cook my eggs. I want grace and I don't want nothing added to it. Amen. And I'm not going to add nothing to it for you guys. I'm not. I care less of how much I'm ridiculed. I can care less. I'm going to preach the truth. Amen. Because God has called me to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not the gospel of a denomination. Not the gospel of a man. Not the gospel of whoever. He told me to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's life. And life everlasting. Amen. And the only way it can come is through Christ. Because he said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man coming to the Father unless he come through me. He's the truth. He's the only way. Nothing I can produce can make another way. He's the way. Pay attention. He said, and then he said, come on, then he said it like this. This is so important. 
that Paul had to go ahead and preach the gospel once again to these guys that he had already shared it. He had to come right back and share it again. This is what he said. He said, he said that, that I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me. And guess what he did? He gave himself for me. He gave himself for me. He, this is the whole message that he gave his life for us. He gave. He laid down his life for us. As a believer, the grace that God has poured upon us came through Jesus Christ when we were undeserving that he gave his life for us. One that was without sin. One that was slain before the foundation of the world. The lamb. What John say? Behold, the lamb that takes away the sins of the world. <laughs> One John said, I can't even unlatch his shoelace. There's another coming behind me and I can't even unlatch his shoelace. I can't do it. He's not worried. Right. All of a sudden, this is the end time we worried. How we flip that around. Come on, let's go. Come on. Take, take, it, take it like this. Take it like this. Take it like this. Take it like this. Why well, I don't want you to let your, your, your partner, your born again believer, sister, brother fall short right there. For Paul said, I do not frustrate the grace of God. In other words, he said, if I come and add anything else, or if I try to tell you any other way than Christ being the only way, then I'm going to frustrate the grace yeah. of God. Yeah. Now, do we want to frustrate the grace of God? No. Do, we want to, do we want to really get into the way of the finished work of the cross? No. Do we want to add man tradition into this to make the cross better? No. How can the cross get better? When it took away the sins of the world, when Christ was crucified and buried, and on the third day he rose from the dead, he came back with all power. He took away sins. That anybody that will come and believe upon him shall be saved. That's right. Amen? Amen? It is by the grace of God that he gave his only begotten son. It wasn't the works of man. Man didn't have nothing to do with it. Man brought all the sin, and God had all the grace. Amen. You might as well go and say amen. amen. So, so, so. I, I want us to look at this and I want to pay attention. I might have some bullet points. I don't know because I got some more places to go today. Uh, Deke, how much time do you give me today, Dean? Okay. Here it is. He pay attention. Pay attention because he want to talk to him. He want to talk to him. He going to call him by name. I like when he do that. He said in, in chapter one, chapter three, he said, Oh, foolish Galatians. And we can use that today. Oh, foolish such and such denomination. Oh, foolish this. Uh... Uh, group, old foolish such and such. How can you do that if they had anything other than grace to right. to what they're preaching? He they said, "Old foolish, blah blah." I, I ain't calling nobody out, but what Paul just did, didn't he? Yes, he, did. he said, "Old foolish Galatians." He talked right there to them, boy. I know they were mad when they left church that day. When they read when that when that guy stood up and read this epistle to them when he got to this part, and he called them foolish. They probably were mad as fire. Who you calling foolish? Well, this is why he called him foolish. He said, oh, foolish Galatians, who had bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ had been evidently set forth, crucified among you. He was crucified among you. And y'all being so foolish to run that somebody can come and bewitch you? You mean to tell me that I haven't preached the gospel to you? That somebody come back behind me and tell you that you got to do such and such plus believe the gospel? How can you be bewitched like that so fast? This is why pastor preached the same thing over and over and over. Yes. This is why I preach it over and over and over. This is why it will never get old to you. Why? Because the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation. And the gospel to those that are perishing is foolish. But to those that are saved, it is the power of God unto salvation. This is why it should never get old to you. Because this is the way that you have been saved. This is the power of God. It should never get old. Amen. You should never get an engineer and say, I want to go here, Pastor. <laughs> That's a show. Amen. That's a show. Amen. He ain't said nothing. He ain't no, no speaking in no tongue when he said it. Preach the gospel with simplicity. Simple. 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 Simplicity means it's got to be understandable to anybody and everybody that will come into and hear the gospel of God. And the Holy Ghost will pick your heart and then you can be quickened and made alive and be saved. Amen. It's by grace that 
whether you are saved. Not by works that any man shall boast. It is a gift of God. A gift of God. I can't deserve it. I can't work my way through it. It's a gift of God. A gift. No, God, I don't want your gift. Can I do something? No, I don't want your something. Because it's evil. It's no good to me. I gave you the best gift when I gave you my son Jesus to go up on camera and shed his blood. You don't think that's good enough? You don't think that's good enough? This is why you see the sin in the world so bad. Because we're running out of stuff other than God. We're trying to get saved some other kind of way. Money can't save you. Houses can't save you. Cars can't save you. Only the blood of Jesus can save you. You make the cross to Christ a non effect when we try to put something else in grace. We really need to understand grace. We really need to understand grace. Then you can save some of that time that you're wasting running behind something else. And guess what? Let allow yourself to be the workman of God that He's already before ordained. The scripture says He before ordained that you may walk in them. But when you're frustrated in grace, you can't walk in it. Amen. Because I've got to do something. I know it's some pastor. Yeah, it is. But you've got to be saved. Okay. It's plenty of work. Okay. It's plenty of work. But you got to say, but I know I'm saved by grace. Now you can work your hands to the bone. Amen. And your hand will never see the bone. Cause why? Because it was already four days for you to do it anyway. Amen. So you're just going to walk in it. You're just going to walk in. It's going to come so easy. You know, it's just going to come so easy. Hey, sister, never ain't seen you this morning. Love you. It's just going to come so easy. Why? Because I'm not depending on myself. That's right. That's right. Get it? You get what I'm trying to get? Why we not to understand grace? Yeah. And it won't be hard. It'll just be done. It'll be just done. Come on, let me get back to the scripture. Come on. I'm just, I'm just trying to see what Paul called him so foolish because it was something he said. He said, <coughs> he said you should not obey the truth. All right, Jesus Christ, all right, the truth. He said, this only what I learned of you. See, he learned of it. Somebody went back and told him. Mm -hmm. Somebody went back and told him. Somebody went, man, uh, Pastor Paul, Brother Paul, they over here, this sickness coming in, they trying to, Get these guys to go back to doing the sacrifices again. He said he's trying to get them to whatever it was that they were trying to do, but he was trying to tell them that it's something else. Pretty sure it probably was circumcised or something like that. It was some kind of work that they had been doing. That he said, he said, this only would I learn of you. He learned, somebody told him. Somebody dived him out. Somebody snitched on him. Somebody snitched, somebody, they had snitching in the Bible. Somebody went and snitched him out. In other words, the Holy Spirit had them to go back and tell the apostle, hey, you need to get over here because these people are doing that which is not of grace. And they need to be reminded. And this is when that letter came. Then he said like this. He said, he said, receive ye the Spirit by work. Now he's being sarcastic right now. He said, this only what I learned. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of of faith. All this is very important. This is why I didn't want you to let your friend go to the bathroom while this word was going. Just tell them they want to get up, just sit down. Hearing of faith. See, there ain't no works in that, was it? You get it? This is why we got to understand grace. You need to write that down. Hearing of faith. Hearing of faith. And then I, and I see in the scripture too, it says faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of what? God. But let me uh, let me let me clear some up to you. Make sure it is discerned properly when you hear it. Because I can get up here and say a bunch of stuff, but I can't lie over the scripture. You got to be able to discern it in the spirit. Because I'm gonna go to a scripture that tells us that the the, the word is not discerned in men's wisdom. That's it's right. got to be discerned in the spirit. That's right. Because a man can't get up and tell you that he's preaching in the name of something else or telling you this or giving you just an encouraging word and he ain't using the scripture, then he really can't concern, discern this in men's wisdom because right. it's spiritual, okay? Come on, come on. Because this is what Paul was telling them. This only have I learned of you to receive ye the spirit by works of the law or by the hearing of faith. He said, are you so foolish having begun in the what? Spirit. Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Mm -hmm. Man, are you, he said, are y'all made perfect by the flesh? 
Y'all begin in the spirit because y'all believe Christ by faith and then now somebody come in and tell you, now you try to, or you, or you made perfect by the flesh because whatever you were doing, it was a flesh thing. It was a man thing. And they were doing it to follow men's traditions. Mm -hmm. So that meaning that, that, that they, they were believing something that was created from man mm -hmm. that they were already practicing and they want to bring it in there, slip it in the grace. I'm going to slip this in the grace. I'm on, but no, he said that. He said, have you suffered so many things in vain? If yet, if yet, he said, if it be yet in vain, he said, he therefore that ministered to you, it, uh, you the spirit and working miracles among you, doing he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. He said, even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted, pay attention, that's a very important word. It's accounted to you, okay? Accounted to you, okay? Accounted to you, okay? It's accounted to him for righteousness. Christ's righteousness was accounted to us, but his righteousness, okay, was accounted to us. Not that you were made righteous in your flesh, mm -hmm. in the spirit, okay? Mm -hmm. That his, he, he, what he said, he that knew no sin became sin that we might be the righteousness of in him. Okay? You the righteousness of God in Christ. We can't leave Christ out, guys. We cannot leave him out. Because you know why? If, 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 oftentimes Christ won't be said to make your flesh puff up. And when your flesh puff up, it's going against the will of God. Amen. Okay? I can leave Christ out because they won't let me say it on TV. So I got to leave Christ out. So it can't do that because that's going to offend somebody. I got to say Christ if I'm a, if I if I'm not ashamed of the gospel I got to say That's Christ right. because I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God unto salvation Amen. to all that believe so I got to say Christ now if my check to take care of my family get in the way of me because they tell me well, Pastor you can't say that no more we're gonna take a hundred thousand away from you then guess what you can have a hundred thousand God gonna supply my area right. according right. to His riches Amen. and glory through Amen. Christ Jesus. Amen. Did he even do Christ? Do Christ the one that you told me not to say? That's the one I said because that's who. That's how I got the power to live. Amen. You might well go and say, man. Amen. I never sell out for nothing, for the gospel. Amen. I sell out for the gospel. Don't say Jesus. Well, you might well just tear that contract up. That's right. I'm gone. Pew. If that why you, we could have took three vacations. Yeah, I ain't taking. I don't care about that. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> got to preach the gospel. And this is what Paul is telling him. He said, he that for that minister to you the spirit and working miracles among you, do it be the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Even as Abraham believed God, it was counted to him for righteousness. Now ye therefore that they, now know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture for said that God who what? Would justify the heathen. The what? Amen. Okay, good deal. Through faith. Justified through faith, y'all. Guess what? Preach before the gospel unto who? Abraham. Abraham heard the gospel too, didn't he? Yes, sir. You see, Abraham heard the gospel. Yep. And then he heard the gospel, he believed. Yep. See that? Didn't nobody even know that did. But that was before Jesus. Now he preached before he was preached to him. Because Jesus was ordained before the foundation of the world. He was he was crucified before the foundation of the world. And that would mean that was before Abraham was created. Oh, yeah. Amen? Amen? Before Adam and Eve was created. Because he said before the foundation of the world. Okay? Come on, we got to hear this. It said, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are what? Blessed of faithful Abraham. For as many as of the works of the law are under the law. ain't under no curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continued not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. So if all you stick with the book of the law, you got to do every one of them. And guess what? When you do every one of them, guess what are you? Cursed. cursed. You cursed. Now who want to be under the curse? Who would want to be guided by the law to be under the curse? Who? Why would... Why would I want to come in and put y'all on the curse? Well, oftentimes it's keep you in bondage. Oftentimes that I can control you. Knowing it, well, and, 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 and let me get right, and oftentimes ignorance of the scripture. And not really allowing Holy Spirit to speak to you 
through the scripture, but you're just going by what somebody told you. This preacher retire, and I'm going to go right up there and preach what that preacher preached. But I ain't going to the book and see what Holy Spirit speak to me. And then when I come in and really start preaching the gospel, then guess what? They're going to happen. Ain't nobody going to be in the church. They're going to all leave. But that's what the gospel does. That's right. Yeah. Jesus said, I he said, I come to tap some stuff up. Yeah. He said, I split families up because of me. Right. Yeah. He said, I tap families up because of me. He said, I brothers will turn against brothers and fathers will get mad at them because of me. I tap family up. Because yeah. some gonna believe and some ain't gonna believe. Right. Some gonna follow me, some gonna say I can kill it. So don't be surprised when your family tore up behind it. Right. You just keep preaching the gospel. You just keep right. trusting Christ. Because the book said that it's gonna happen. That's what the book say. Okay? So come on, let's let us understand that. Alright, he said, and he said like this, for as many are the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, cursed is everyone that continued not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man, pay attention, come on, say that with me, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of who? God. No man is justified by the law in the sight of God. Now, why would you want to be justified in the sight of man just to please man instead of God? That's foolish, ain't it? Yep. I want everybody to think that I'm this, that, and the other in front of them. But the whole time, God said, you ain't really believing me. You thinking this that your work you're doing that's got you saved. Why would I want to do that? When he just tell me right here, he said, but no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. No man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It said no man. No. N-O. Well, why are you saying that? I want, us to, I want us to understand grace. I want us to understand grace and understand that law don't have nothing to do with grace. Okay? Come on. Come on. All right. It said, but the just shall live by what? That's just too easy, Pastor. You mean all I got to do is trust Christ and live? Yes. Believe. Believe. That's what faith is. Well, I need to mix a little bit of this law with it. No, you can't. You can't call it grace no more. Mm -hmm. You can call it whatever you want to call it. You can call it what you want. Yeah. You, <laughs> you can start your own religion if that's what you want to do, but then you can't put no grace in it. You can't preach grace, period. Period. Amen. You cannot add grace to it, period. The moment that you add something else to it, well, what you got to do to be saved is you come on join this church, and what we're going to do is baptize you, and then we're going to let you come in for five days, and then we're going to let you come out the door for five days, and then we're going to take you around the dare shams of food world and whatever, and then you stand out there for ten weeks, and then we might see if you're saved yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we're going to watch you for a couple of months and see if you're still smoking, sniffing, chewing, and, uh, and cussing, and, <laughs> and we're going to make you see if you, and then we'll, we'll, we'll know if you're saved yet. That's that's probation period. <laughs> God saved you the moment that you believed upon Jesus Christ. Amen. He saved you right then. Amen. And not only that, he blessed you with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Right then. Amen. According to the scripture. Amen. According to the scripture. According to the scripture. Amen. Okay? According to the scripture. Not according to the book of blah blah. According to the scripture. He was sealed with the Holy Ghost. A promise. Because he promised that he would send the Holy Spirit. And it fell on the day of Pentecost. And it was spread out. And the gospel message been spread out. We've been preaching the gospel. And people are being saved. Amen. Why? Because it's the power of God unto salvation. All that believe. I know I step on some toes. I love stepping on toes. I want them to say ouch. Because if you add anything else to grace. You just make it. You make the cause of Christ another thing. Anytime I'm doing that, I'm just stepping right back on God's feet and telling God that God, you ain't enough. That ain't enough. We got to have something else. They just can't tell me if I come up for as a sinner and, and, and admit I'm a sinner and like you say, turn and change my mind and turn from the world and me and everything else, repent of all this, that, that. You mean to tell me that, that I got to do something else? I can't, I can't do something? No. You can't, because you could even repent without being reborn. Because <laughs> get why? Because you and your sin, you don't care about no sin. You have to have a spirit of God to quicken you and make you alive to even know that you are self. Amen. 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 That makes sense. 
Yeah. What if I go and repent and I'm going to How are you going to repent? You're still dead. You can't go in no graveyard and tell a dead man to get up. Mm -hmm. You got to be quick. You got to be made alive. Yeah. To recognize that who we are as sinners. And recognize that it's by His grace. Amen. See, we got to understand the work of grace. We really need to understand the work of grace, not even in the aspect of salvation, but in the life that we live every day. That song says, by God's grace. Mm -hmm. I like the part when he said, even though I knew the word, but still I wouldn't obey. I love that part because he knew the word, but he couldn't obey. Why? Because he was trying to obey it in your flesh. That's it. That's <laughs> and that's why he knew it was God's grace. That's why he, was, that's why he said it loud there. It was God's grace. Because he recognized he couldn't do it. That's right. Amen. You see how, how much truth was in that? Amen. He said, I knew the word, but still I wouldn't obey. Then all of a sudden he said, it was God's grace. Because he recognized I couldn't do it. Amen. Ain't that something? Yeah, it is. Holy Ghost sung that song. That's beautiful. Yeah, Holy Ghost sung that. He goes, I knew the word, but still I couldn't obey. Because you can't obey in your flesh. It's impossible. The flesh cannot serve God. And he don't want He's serving to. in the spirit. Amen. Oh, man. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. But no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident. For the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith. <laughs> but the man that doeth them shall what? Live in them. Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the law. Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the law. Christ had, can you say it? Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the law. That's why they want you to let your friend go to the bathroom because they need to see this. Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the law. So when somebody come to you and you get in there, you ain't keeping that. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of your law. You cursed. You cursed. Now let me give you Christ so you can be redeemed. Because Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Amen. Why is that? Why is that? Why is that there since you so smart? He did what? Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. He was made a curse for us. Guess what? Here it is. Because it's in the book. It's in the book. For it is written. He said, It is written. It is written. It is written. Guess how? Curse is everyone. That hanging on a tree. Go to Isaiah 52. It's in there. It's in the, it was already in the prophets. It was already in the prophets. It was already there. Isaiah prophesied on. And, and we'll take this scripture and we'll use it so much in the wrong way. By his Christ you are healed. And they be hurting like I don't know what. Because these bodies are physical and they will hurt. Mine yep. hurting right now too. But I know I'm healed. I'm still healed. I'm healed from sin. That's right. I ain't got no more sin on me. He, my sin is gone. He taking away my sin. Amen. He taking away my sin because he was led like a sheep led to the sheep. He was led. He was. He was. Oh man, he was bruised for my transgression. Come on, I want Isaiah prophesied on this in 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 fifty two in fifty three in Isaiah fifty three. He prophesied. The prophet preached this. He preached this grace right here. He preached this grace right here. But he also showed us why. Why, why would his Savior have to come? He showed us that in all the verses. Pay attention to this. Pay attention. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. He said in 53, Who had believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Then get what he said. For he shall grow up before him as a what? Tender plant. And as the root out of what? A dry ground. He had no form. What? No commonness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Guess what? He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow. And what and what else? Acquainted with grief. And we and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised. And what? We esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our griefs. And carry our sorrows, yet we did esteem. Guess what? Here you go. Him stricken, smiting of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for the for our iniquities. 
The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Pay attention. All we were like sheep had gone astray. We have turned every. You go, this is this, this is where that repent part comes. This is where that repent comes from. Pay attention. All we were like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. Now turn back to God. Now turn back to God. God have turned our own way, and the Lord had laid upon him the iniquities of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before what? Her shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. You talking about Jesus? You talking about Jesus? But you kept saying that we turned each one to our own way. He said, well, that's thing we didn't even look. We didn't even lift him up. Doesn't that sound like a lot to think on? See, that when we forget grace. See, that when we can't see grace. Then we want to make it be about us or make it be about something or something else. Then we forget about grace that it's all about him. It's all about him. It's all about him. It's nothing that we have to offer but sin. Ungodliness. All our what? All our righteousness are as for filthy rags unto him. And we got to come before him naked. Naked. We got to come before him naked. Nothing. We got to come before him bankrupt. Bankrupt. And allow him to put his rights on our account. That's right. Bankrupt. Yes, I'm coming for a bankrupt. Chapter 19 or 21 yes. or 25. <laughs> bankrupt. I'm bankrupt. And I need you to put all your righteousness upon me. And I don't want to see nothing there. I just want you to see Jesus. Amen. You get it? Amen. This is understanding grace. To where the point that I'm going to say, I don't want you to see nothing on me at all. I just want you to see your son, Jesus Christ. And that's it. Pay attention. I'm going to get out of here. Pay attention. Because... This is very important that we allow grace to operate, that we are, that we'll move out the way and allow that grace, not in just the salvation portion of it, but like I say in our everyday life, we understand it's by his grace, his mercy. Okay? His grace, his mercy. Okay, even when we're undeserving, his grace allowed us to be where we're at right now. His grace, even as I'm going through whatever trial or whatever, guess what? Your grace is sufficient. Amen. Paul went to him three times, didn't he? Yes. Wanted to remove that, didn't he? Yeah. Didn't get what he said. His grace was sufficient, wasn't it? Yeah. Amen. So we understand that, right? His grace. We never want to, even, even in the way of our salvation, we don't never want to, to try to put nothing else in. And not even in our day-to-day -day walk, we understand that it's by God's grace. Amen. Because I really want us to get into that. We're going to get into these teachings on grace. I really want us to recognize the attributes, not only the salvation purpose of grace, but also the living purpose of grace. Amen. Amen. Come on. We, amen. It's powerful, man. It's powerful. Because it, all this is just open to me. I, could, I didn't even see all that. I didn't even see it. So pay attention to this and we're going to understand. Go to Romans and I'm going to get out of here. I promise y'all this time. Every time preachers say they preach about two more hours, but I ain't going to do that. Uh, <laughs> I, I ain't going to try to get it all in one day Because I pray that you come out Wednesday And I pray that you go come Tuesday or high up and get more I'm just going to give you what God has given me in portions Amen So recognize this In Romans 3 and 20 And I'm going to get out of here I'm going to get out I'm, I'm going to get out of here for real Romans 3 and 20 This is where I want y'all I, I don't want nobody to be talking about Man you, you talking all that no, I'm going to yeah, yeah. see it Go to three fit. Go go three twenty. I get this so often. I get this so often, and I see it. And that's why a lot of times I take my phone and I just put it to the side. I get this so often. All these Facebook preachers, they want to preach on Facebook and they want to talk about the law all the time, but they really don't understand law. Or uh, Timothy said, I mean, Paul told Timothy that law is good if it's used properly. Mm -hmm. The law is to bring you to Christ. It's to make you realize that you're sinful and make you come to the cross of Christ. That's what the law is for. But when you come to the cross of Christ, you recognize you're a sinner. You recognize you fall short. You recognize that there ain't nothing about you that God saved you. You recognize that. Now, it's for me to get to preach the grace of God. Amen. Come on. Why, 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 why Pastor? Come on. Come on. Verse 20. Going back now to the salvation part of grace, okay? This is the salvation part of grace. We, we kind of hit both of them a little bit today. 
I want you to recognize the free gift and then the gift of salvation. I want you to recognize both of them, but they all tied in one, basically. Because when you get the free gate, grace, when you get the gift of grace for salvation, then you'll be operating and walking in the grace of God, your life that you live per every day. Because it's going to be by his grace. Okay? And then the attributes that you'll have will be because of his grace. And the attributes that will be of Christ. Let the mind, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. You have the mind of Christ. Operate in Christ. Because it's Christ in you. Okay? Get it? Come on. We're not operating out of the flesh. He say walk not out of the flesh. And you're obey, but guess what we try to do? We try to walk in the spirit. And recognize the spirit. And recognize that old dead man still right there. Hanging on your shoulder. As a matter of fact, you carry him. Mm -hmm. He ain't just hanging on. You got your hand on carrying him too. You carrying him. Yeah. And you can't shake him. You, but when, when he come back and get you, he'd you, you he, he be gone then. Yeah, he'd be, hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on, let's, let's get it. 20, it is 20. Says it like this. Uh, Romans 3 and 20. Here it is. And you get used to hearing this because I, I bring it up all the time. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, thou shalt know what? Yes. Be justified in whose sight? His sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Amen. So the more I preach the law to you, the more you're going to know your sin. Okay. The more you're going to Paul say, I had not known sin if it wasn't for the law. Amen. Paul said, I wouldn't have known sin because Paul was, was zealous for the law. Yeah. And he would, he would knock down the master road. Y'all hear that story a lot. But he was zealous for the law. But then he when his eyes opened and he knew, oh, Lord, yeah. I'm just still on, I'm on my way to hell. Yeah. I'm on my way to hell. And he was good and he was zealous for the law. Yes, he was. Yeah. yeah. And he would knock down on the master road. That's what I can't understand how often times we can keep throwing a law on folk, law on folk, and then we want to quote everything Paul say, and Paul had to be born again. Yeah. <laughs> and he was zealous of the law, but he had to be born again. Amen. He had to be born again. Yes. And when he was born again, he had a new mind. He repented from the old way he was thinking, and he turned to the new way. And what he did, he took that old and he applied it to the new, and he recognized, oh, Okay, this is what the shadow of what was to come. This is all this was telling me about Jesus. But this is the, the manifestation of Jesus. The grace is the manifestation of everything I learned in the law. This is the manifestation. This is it came, coming true. This is it right now. Then we're walking in that what they were them priests were doing, sprinkling the blood and all that. That blood represented Jesus. That going into the temple, all that represented Christ. The blood that they put over the lintel, that blood represented Jesus. Amen. And the deaf angel wouldn't come upon them. So guess what? When you accept Christ and the blood is over you, guess what? You're praying from death to life. Amen. <laughs> you promise eternal life. Amen. But why? Because we got the blood of Jesus covering us. Amen. That's what that represented when Moses... <laughs> so I can't take Moses and put him in grace. Because they're going to say, even in the scripture, say Moses preached law, but Jesus came with grace. So how can I tell you, Moses said do this, and then turn around, but Jesus said do this. And how you I'm just confused, but do you want me to do this, or do you want me to do this? I'm just going to hold my head against the wall, I'm just don't know what to do. That's why a lot of folk leave church. That's right. Because they're confused. Yep. They're confused. Well, I can't. Ignorance of what the words say. But we want to understand it in the flesh. You can't understand this word in the flesh. You got to understand it in the spirit. Yeah. You read your word, you all act Holy Spirit, open my eyes, illuminate my eyes for spirit so I can understand yeah. this. Yes. You're not studying this to go before your fifth grade class and do a recital. That's right. This is your life living. Yeah. While you're here on earth, do that book. Yeah. That's right. Real time. Real time. Amen? Amen. Come on. Amen. I, I didn't mean to go there, but I did. Amen. Come on, let's go, let's go. Here it is. And it said, Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, manifest being witnessed by what? The law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of what? Jesus Christ unto all upon all of them that believe. But there's no difference for all have sin, all have sin, not had sin or going to say all have sin and 
come short, what? Of the glory. So if you don't sin, you come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Go to John 1. I'm going to get out of here. I, I promise you this time. And I ain't lying in church. I still don't know the difference in lying in church and out of church. I ain't gonna lie to you in church. Wait till we get out the door and then I'll tell you. The difference is law and grace. That's it. The difference is law and grace. Well, the law is telling me that if I lie to you outside the church, it's all right. But if I lie to you in church, then it's a sin. No, sin is a sin. Period. If you lie in the church or well, this might be a disco club next week. Who knows? <laughs> they might move us. We might be somewhere else. Next time you come in, be a script club. They can do anything with this building. That's right. Uh, That's right. Uh, this is a building. And they weep me. I might come. They're born again. They moved across town. <laughs> then they coming tonight. Uh, sexy Julia or somebody. <laughs> what? This is a script club? No, this you build a church. Yeah. This is just a building. There's no love in no building. Amen. This is a building. They might come there and knock this building down next week. The man probably. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Don't, don't do that. That go log in. Who are our building? Man, that's a building. You the church. Amen. Right Amen. We go have church on top of the building. Yeah. Amen. Pay attention, pay attention. I want us to see this. I want to see this. I got two points I'm going to hit, then I'm going to get up out of here. This is what I want us to see as far as why we understand that about the flesh part. And then we want to understand about the spirit part. Then I want to understand about the grace. Because I want to even see this in 1 John. I want to see this so we can understand how deep this grace can go, okay? And I want us to understand that if you look at it from the flesh point of view, then you're looking at it from the wrong view, okay? John 3 and 3 is going to tell us that which is what we've got on our thing, that in, in, to be born again, you have to understand this. The only way that you can't understand what we're talking about is that you be born again, Okay? And then Nicodemus said, how can a man be born again? Can you go back into the mother womb? Jesus said, man, you got to be born of the spirit. You got to be born of water and of the spirit. Okay? Pay attention. But I don't want to lose you. Y'all this time, to tell the person, y'all back from the bathroom. I grab my hand again and stay with me. I don't want you to leave. All right? Here it is. All right? I'm going to go here first. I'm going to go here first. Then I'm going to go. I am just want to hit a point. And I'm gonna, it's going to come to you. Holy Spirit going to make you understand what I'm saying. So I won't really have to go in depth in this. Okay? Holy Spirit going to open your eyes. And we prayed over that when we started. And I believe the Holy Spirit going to open your eyes to this. All right. Here, here, I'm going to go uh, John 1 and verse 10. I'm going to start there. Then I'm going to jump. Here it is. He was in the world. To my Jesus. And the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as every as as many as received him, to him, to them gave he power to come to become the sons of God, even to them that believed on his name. Y'all see that? Which was born, pay attention, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. This is how we get the rebirth when we believe upon Christ because he was not born of the will of man. He was not born of the flesh. He was born of the spirit. Amen. 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 That's where the rebirth come in, okay? This is where the rebirth come in at. Because, all right, come on. Now, here it is. I, I, I don't really want to get into John right now, so jump to 17 because I'm going to throw this law in now. Go to 17. For the law was given by who? Moses. But grace came, but grace and truth, and truth came by who? Jesus Christ. Y'all see that? The law was given by Moses, but grace came by what? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Y'all seen that in the book, didn't you? Yeah. Didn't y'all just see that? Yeah. All right. Understand this. This is why they couldn't understand it right here. Go to John 3 and 3. I promise it's going to be it. Go to John 3 and 3. And I'm not going to get on Nicodemus too much. I'm not going to get on him. I'm just going to go all the way to where I want you to see. He said, that was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, 
Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which, this is where I want to hit you at right here, that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Y'all get it? Got to be born again to even understand grace. You got to be un to, to really understand and separate grace from law. You got to be born again, cause Nicodemus knew the law. Yeah. He knew the law. He was a Pharisee. He taught. He was a teacher of the law. He knew, but he couldn't see. He couldn't see it. Jesus said, "You had to be born again." Guess what? He had to be born of Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit had to come upon him in order for him to see that which Jesus was talking about. He couldn't see it. And then he went on in John three, and you know he went into John three and three sixteen saying. But God so loved the world that he gave to be only begotten the Son. Then he went on and he really preached the gospel to him. Okay? So understand this, that when we understand grace, when we understand grace, we understand how the redemption power of Christ's blood has saved us. And it wasn't because of nothing that we've done to deserve it. It's all because of But we frustrate grace when we try to add something to it and then we make it of none effect. Amen. The grace can flow so much easier within our lives as we just trust the word of God and trust the truth of God that we're saved by grace through faith and that which he had done on Calvary. Y'all know I got to go there, and I promise y'all this is it. I got you at least for another two minutes. Go to <laughs> Ephesians 2. Y'all know I got to go there. Because this is, this is what I want us to see. This is what I want. I love going through the Bible. And I one time in, in my in my in my uh, walk as a minister, as my walk, I, if somebody kind of showed me something that said something that was foolish now that I understand. Hey, you got to take one scripture and go, man. All the scriptures all to line up. So if I take four or five of them and bring them all together, they all say the same thing. I can't just say take one scripture and make a big old three hour sermon and then. One scripture and talk about everything else in the world. Why can't I just talk? Let the scripture talk for itself. Amen. <laughs> Why can't I just let the scripture say what it say? Why do I gotta go write a three-page letter and go up here and be talking about half of what I want to say, and then the scripture only said one scripture? No, I gotta let the word of God speak. So that's why I go back because it's not that I'm lazy. I don't want to write no sermon. I want, the, I want the scripture to speak. Amen. That's why I go to the scripture because if I speak it, this is the living word. Amen. This is what's going. This is what Amen. the faith come in. Amen. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God, not by the word of Chester. Amen. I might throw a joke in there now and then because that's just Chester. See, so that'd be the flesh. Y'all don't even know it. <laughs> that'd be the flesh. You only say, "Man, let that flesh down." That's my. That's me. That's how God made me. That's me. So pay attention to this. And I'm and I'm I promise you this time, I really do promise you this time. I'm gonna get out, I got y'all till lunchtime. I hope my clock stops about 10 minutes so I get 10 extra minutes in y'all. I just love to be with y'all so much. I'm gonna let you go on. I know I know somebody got their dinner in the hood. <laughs> Better quit putting that dinner in the hood when I'm preaching. <laughs> you better not do that. <laughs> Come on, come on, come on, come on, let's go, let's go. Ephesians 2, y'all ought to know about hard. Ephesians Amen. 2 and 8. Then I'm going to get somewhere and I'm going to show us to allow that, how we're going to allow that grace and understand this grace. He put it, He uh, Paul kind of done it, and he, he when he done this through the power of the Holy Spirit, he hit both ways of how grace works in our lives. He hit it both ways. And if we would just pay attention and go home and meditate on this later on, go back and read it again. But see how he hit it both ways in this particular scripture to even, I'm going to put it like this, we're going to sum the sermon up with this. And it's the word of God that we're going to sum everything up that we talked about today, we're going to sum it up in this scripture. Is that good? We're going to cap it off with scripture. And that, that's a good way to do it, ain't it? We're going to cap it off with scripture. So today's sermon that you heard, we're going to cap it off with more word of God. Amen? Amen. Here it is. The, today's sermon is capped off with this 
scripture right here, Ephesians 2 and 8 said, For by grace are ye saved, come on, say it with me, For, for grace ye are saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. That's the whole sermon. That's the whole sermon. It's telling you how you say. It's telling you that it's a gift. It's telling that your works ain't going to work. But it's telling you that he, once you accepted Christ, you were created in him, and now you create unto good works. And it's in Christ that the works can be done. Because you are his workmanship, those that have accepted him, you are his workmanship, and guess what? You were foreordained before the foundation of the world to walk in them. Amen. 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 So you so 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 if you really need to know your identity later on, just go back to Ephesians 2 and 8. And go back again and let Holy Spirit speak to you and it'll tell you everything you need to know right there. Amen. It will tell you everything you need to know right there. There may be somebody today that that, that haven't accepted Christ as his Savior today. It might be somebody today that want to be saved right now. That I'm here right now to tell you that the word is right here. The word is near thee right now that thee can be, you can be saved right now. They say that, 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 that in the scripture that it said that the word is now. It's right here. It's not. That means it's near. It's right here. The word has been spoken. But we have preached the gospel today. The gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's the way any man can be saved. Any woman can be saved. It's only through preaching of the gospel. Amen. that The preaching of the gospel. So, if there's somebody today that want to come right now and accept Christ as your Savior, right now is the time. Right now is the time that you can come before Him right now and receive Him as your Savior. Right now. Today is the day of salvation. Right now. And you can come right now and accept Him and believe upon Him. The one that died for our sin. The one that redeemed us. The one that's our mediator. The one that sit on the right hand of God the Father right now making intercessions for us right now. He's right now ready for any soul to be saved. Right now. He's, and, and you, you, I mean, you can come before him right now if you never accepted him. And right now, he will receive you as a son right now. And not only that, you'll be sealed with the Holy Ghost of promise. And guess what? You're saved. You're saved. Because you believed upon what he did upon Calvary. And you believe that you're saved by grace. And guess what? We bring all the sin and God has all the grace. And we come, whenever we come before him, we come before him as a sinner. Because the only way you can come before him is as a sinner to be saved. Amen? Amen. And you saved from sin. Future, past, and present sin. Saved. Fall from the what, Angela? From the what? I was reading. Oh, she read. <laughs> she, always, she always said, fall from the east to the west. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so we just thank God for that opportunity. And we pray and we thank God for every believer today that is already saved. And we bless. I pray that something was said today that will help you in your day-to-day -day walk to understand grace. Understanding grace is so powerful. And, 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 and man, I ain't going to lie to y'all. And, and when this came to me the other day, it was just like, I started reading and I'm like, I just thought I understood grace. But I really did. It is powerful. And then it's so easy to take yourself out of grace. The moment that you start thinking or the moment that you start acting towards them, you take yourself out of grace. Yeah. Yeah. And it's done often and we don't even know it. Yeah. It's done so often because it's just the way the flesh operates. That's just the way the, the mindset operates. But man, when we understand grace, you can walk, man. It is, oh. I love Sister Ann attitude a lot of times she say, it's by the grace of God. You know, then I used to hear uh, uh, Elsa Mom Horn. She used to say, oh, by the grace of God. And then you're like, by the grace of God. And I'm like, man, do I really, do they really understand? Man, I say, man, if I understand the grace of God, then I won't frustrate the grace of God. Then I just walk. I just walk. I ain't trying to be what I ain't. I ain't trying to be no more than I. I'm just walking in Christ. Man, it's so easy. Even if when it's hard, it's just like the grace of God. And I know every situation, and we all got situations in our lives that ain't good, that don't feel good. But I still think about the grace of God. Man, ain't he so, he's so good, ain't he? 
Yeah, he's so good, man. He's so good. So we just thinking, and when we understand the grace of God, then we can understand that he is in control and his will be done. Amen. And then we just allow, stay out of his way. Stay out of his way. Stay out of his way. Regardless of what the preacher tell you, stay out of his way and allow him to do. He can do it. And he don't need our help to do it. Okay? Every time you get in his way, you mess up. Allow that grace. That's what grace is. Our merit of favor is his love for us. And I don't want to get in the way of it. But thinking I'm some more than what I am. I want to stay in my, I want to play my role. What is, I want to stay in my lane. And I will allow God to just drive. I want him to drive the truck, park the truck. If he want to wreck the truck, he can wreck the truck. It's him. I'm going to say, God, I'm trusting you even in the wreck. Now, I got to tr trust him. Amen. Paul trusted him, shipwreck, snake bit him. You remember the snake bit him was dead on the floor? Then he supposed to be dead by now. He was going to try to shake him out. He's walking by grace. Yeah, yeah he's walking by grace. Shipwreck, they trying to kill him. You know, that's grace, the grace of God. He's able to keep him. Yeah, shipwreck, people want to beat him up and all that. That might be something you go, y'all go ahead and cut off. Look, if, it, if it, there might be someone today that want to come and, and